So um, <laughs> there, there she is, uh, the uh, female Q fly doing what she does best, laying one of her eggs or laying a, a batch of eggs inside a fruit, spreading some rots, infesting it with larvae, causing growers sleepless nights around the nation, and, um, and also costing, as Tony said, 100 million a year um, in damage costs and control. So uh, this project, um, it was a tall order. It's looking for um, developing an attractant to put in a trap to, that specifically targets the mated female key fly. So there, there, there are commercially um, available uh, traps for tephridid fruit flies. Uh, the most commonly used trap is a feeding trap. That's based on protein and protein odors. Now, um, as research that was done earlier by uh, Tony's group showed, the, the likelihood was uh, is that, that uh, these protein feeding traps are mo uh, going to attract the virgin females, which are hungry for protein to become sexually mature. The other form of trap is the more elusive uh, concept of the, uh, the trap for mated females, which is based on, uh, it's a fruit mimic. It can be visual cues. So this lad trap is, 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 a, is an earlier, um, is, a, is a fruit fry trap that was, was tested in an earlier project, CRC project, uh, and does work successfully um, to trap these female flies, but it doesn't have any odors. And then there's the fruition trap, which is a new trap, which is on the market, which, um, yeah, hasn't been fully validated yet as a trap um, for attracting um, these mated female fruit flies. With so the, the process of developing a lure is, is a complex toing and froing that it involves, you can be split it into four processes really. The first is lots of odor analysis. We had to um, analyze the odors of many different fruits from, different, um, from the flies themselves, from microbes associated with the, fly, the flies. And as you can see in, the, um, in that bottom graph there, there's the point of that. Well, the, um, those, the, um, all those little peaks on that graph, they're all the different components in an odor. They've got, there can be hundreds of chemicals within an odor. And we have to sort through all the different odors to find which ones work best as a lure. Then there's a way of screening, narrowing down this search in, in that we use electrophysiology. We wire up insects' antennae to a couple of electrodes. You pass the different chemicals, volatiles, over the antennae. And you can select the ones that at least the insect's detecting. You don't know if it's a deterrent, you don't know if it's an attractant, but at least you're narrowing down your search. Then you do behavioral trials, which are in the lab and in cages, and going on to larger cages and then into the field. And eventually you do your field testing of the blends to see if any of them work. And it all comes down to finding the right mix. So of all these different chemicals from all these different categories, how do we get the right ones down to just a few chemicals that we can use to make a synthetic lure? And that's what this project was about. So, an earlier, um, we, we had a, an earlier project with, um, with, with Horde Innovation where we found proof of concept that a few ripening odors were very important in attracting the females. And this current project built on that, um, taking it from the lab out into the field um, and building on that base blend of three ripening um, esters. And you'll see them in the graphs in the field trials sometimes as SE. We also did a search through many other of these esters. That's the, those are the electrophysiological results there. We found lots of uh, um, other esters were being picked up, odors, um, by the female fruit flies. Um, but none of these were really significantly improving our blend, and some of them, really interestingly, these are fruit odors, were deterrents. You put them in a the blend, it knocks out the attraction. So really important not, we, we learned what not to put in our blends as well. We did some work on pheromones, looking at female pheromones. Um, i cut a long story short. We found some very interesting compounds that were produced by females, but they weren't working in the traps as attractants. So we moved on, and we started looking at microbial odors, and this was a real breakthrough for us. This is work that Alex Piper was, was working on, and we basically, Alex, looked at different um, fungi and yeast that were being carried about by female fruit flies in their gut and also on their body. Some of these yeasts are beneficial to the larvae, so they, the larvae would feed, um, we, their survival would be much better when the yeasts were around. So the female, and the females were attracted to some of these yeasts, the odors of the yeasts. So we compared the different odors from the different yeasts, we did some electrophysiological tests on the antennae and also on the insect palps as well, and we, we found three yeast fun fungal volatiles that were, that were attractive to um, the female flies. But more importantly, they were attractive when they were put together with these three esters. So we're getting, we were getting our blend there. So you'll see those sometimes on our field results as, as SE plus FV. It's our, it, was, it was our best blend that we worked on. 
And then we went on to look at all the other compounds that could be involved. And again, sort of cutting a long story short, we looked through many, many different flora volatiles, leaf volatiles, other fruit volatiles, and we got down, we, we found that not, none of them were really um, incre significantly increasing the attraction. And again, as you can see there, some of them were actually decreasing it. So it came down to, in the end, that we had a six volatile blend that was working, that seemed to be working well, and it was a combination of, of fruit volatiles and fungal volatiles. So before I go to the field work, um, we, you can see there's lots of uh, process, lots of permutations and combinations of different volatiles we have to put together, lots of trial and error to work out which might be the best blend, which compounds. We wanted to see if we could transform this. Is there a new technology we can use um, uh, and we can adapt to develop these lures better? And this is where we collaborated with Mikhail Carlson from uh, University of Stockholm. And Mikhail is an insect neuro neuroscientist who works on an, uh, imaging, optical imaging of the insect brain. And the idea was that it, it, by looking at the, um, we knew that from its studies on, on bees and on moths, that you, by looking at the, the odor-evoked responses by doing this imaging of the insect brain, uh, you can see synergistic effects between compounds, and you can see potential deterrents. So we wanted to know, could we adapt that to developing lures? And it would be a completely new technology. So it was really, it, Mikhail worked um, a lot on this project, a lot more. It was only a small component. He did an awful lot of work trying to get it to work, because it had never been done on trephidus before. It's been done on bees and moths. And, um, and he got it to work. And it started off working on, um, and those are the images you can see there at the top. He started working on single volatiles, single odors to see if they worked. He started uh, and then improved this technique. Um, I went over to Sweden and worked with him, worked with him on it and looked at his methods. And, um, and then he developed it to, to start looking at synergistic relationships uh, between these different components. That bottom, in that bottom figure there, you can see there are three, those are our three individual esters, and, the, uh, and that last um, figure there is, is the three combined together. And you, the deeper colors are higher excitation, so definitely we're seeing um, some synergism there. And um, we've got two papers uh, being submitted on that. Uh, we've got another one that's going to go in this year, so really nice advancement in science. Also, AgriBio is planning to buy this equipment. It'll be the first time it'll be in Australia in the next 12 months. So um, we've got a really nice legacy with optical imaging and, this, uh, and, and the development of this, tech, this technology. OK, before I get to the field trials, uh, the other thing that was really important in, 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 in this project was because these odors are, are very volatile, they, they evaporate off very quickly, very easily. Um, we had to develop a new dispenser. Kevin came from a, a spotted wing Drosophila background where they'd been working in the UK, um, looking at new dispensers. These, these sachets, uh, which slow down the emissions of the volatiles. You can have different thicknesses, so you can, have, um, you can have fast and slower emissions. And you load up these dental wicks. We put them inside the lad trap, so they diffuse out through the center of the, of the trap. And then we went to the field with it to start our field testing. So how do we do? Well. We were very excited when we started off in Citrus, and we found that uh, what you really need to look at here on these graphs are the, the best blend is our, is, our, is our ester and fungal blend that we were testing. The, the lad trap, the green one, is just the visual trap on its own, so without the odors. And then the, the orange is the bio trap, which is the protein, the, fe the feeding trap. And, uh, and we found in the Citrus Orchard that, that we were winning. So it was very exciting. Um, we would get, it, certainly the odors were making a difference in the visual trap, and, and we seemed to be beating the bio trap. Don't get worried yet, Colin. Um, so then we went into the, the fig orchards, and we, there was a lot of flies in this fig orchard, and we, we trialed it again, and again, our, our trap was winning. Then we went into stone fruit, and we found that um, although our trap was, was working and it was catching, again, more flies than the visual trap on its own, this combined trap, Biotrap was just whooping ass on it. You know, Biotrap really did well. Um, and, we started, and so, of course, we started thinking, what's going on here? You know, why is, why is the, whoops, why is the Biotrap um, attracting um, so many more flies? Is it because it's stone fruit and it's something to do with this competition for the odors that we're using? Or is it to do with the structure of the population, that there's just lots of virgin females around? It was an old orchard. There was a lot of fruit on the ground. There could be, there could be that there's lots and lots of new virgin females emerging. 
We went back to our fig trial, uh, our fig orchard the next year, and it had, this was this year, and it had loads of flies. So we went back, set up a whole lot more traps. Those gray bars that you'll see are just all other little combinations of the lures that we were trying along the way. Um, and again, our, the, the bio trap pipped us um, on, on, in, in this fig orchard. There was a lot of flies around, um, not by as much. So this was the same orchard tested on different years, and the, different, the traps varied a lot in their effectiveness. So we really started to think this is something to do with the differences in the structure. This may be something to do with the differences in the structure of the population. So we then went about dissecting all of the flies that, um, that, that we were catching in the traps and looking at whether they were mated, looking at whether they were virgin. And, um, and as we had, as, as the sort of theory had, had uh, suspected, the biotrap is catching more virgin flies, but it does catch the mated flies as well. So it's only catching about 38% of, of the mated flies, whereas our blem was catching about 60, was 67% of the mated flies, so catching much more mated flies. So what we were sort of learning from this is, 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 it, is it what we, if we really want to knock out the population, we have to take out the virgin females and we have to take out the mated flies. Then we can really knock it down. So it may be the way to go forward as we develop these trapping strategies is to have a mixed trapping strategy with both the, the protein feeding lures and also with these, with these um, mated female uh, traps. So in summary, um, uh, we managed to successfully develop um, a lure that specifically targets the mated female cue fly. Um, I haven't mentioned the other competitor, the fruition trap, um, mainly because we didn't get to do any extensive field trials until, the, um, until at the end. We did a week's trial at the end, um, and we our trap did an awful lot better, let's just say. Um, but what we want to do is um, we want to do some um, comprehensive evaluation trials. We don't go running out saying we've, we've got this great new trap until we've really thoroughly um, tested it in the field and tested it against the other traps available. Um, our lures, this blend, this complex blend the, the, of, 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 of fruit and fungal odors, we need to understand how to use these traps. We can't just go putting them out in the field without understanding the populations, and maybe we need to move ahead and start looking at a slightly different trapping strategy. Lots of people worked on the project, um, and I, can't, I haven't got time to acknowledge them all. Um, of course, thanks very much to Tony Clark, who's, I'm sure, long gone back in bed um, for a lot of mentoring and uh, for providing me with this, a wealth of knowledge on fruit flies. Thanks a lot, everyone. Cheers. When you have 150 dead flies in a trap, doesn't that change the volatiles of what's going on when they start to degrade and then influence? Does it not change the volatiles that are being emitted because you've got dead flies with microbes all over them emitting more volatiles that are different to what you originally put in there? Within the, we, you mean we, on our sticky trap or in the yeah. feeding trap? Yeah, for, for a trap that has trapping dead flies. You, you've got like 150 dead flies in there and some of them. Yeah, so in the, in the, in the, um, in the protein trap, um, it, it certainly, I mean, you're going to get a lot of buildup of different microbes, and, um, and I think Colin finds that that actually improves it. Little, as, it go, as it ages, does it, in the field? Um, with, the, with, the, with our trap, they're pretty much just flying on and you know, stuck on the sticky trap. Um, they don't seem to care, these flies. They're not the smartest of flies, actually. They're a big pest, but um, they, and they, and they, so they don't seem to be deterred by, by other dead flies. So, yeah, thanks.